You better watch up, you better not cry, you better not pout, I am telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Make a list, check it twice, he's gonna find out who's a naughty or liar. Santa Claus is coming to town. But he sees you when you're sleeping, and he knows when you're awake. He knows that you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. So, <clears throat> if you know anything about me, it's that, um, I love Christmas. So, here I am, decked out in my Christmas finery to talk about the books that I want to read in December because I just cannot contain it. I am bursting with Christmas spirit. I just must be all Christmas for the whole month of December. Here I am in my tree get up. I don't know if you can really see it, but... I'm a tree. I'm a tree! And um, this is how I'm going to be filming my December TBR because um, that's what December deserves, honestly, is me as a tree. So um, to get in the holiday spirit, I'm first going to be doing it. Tis the Season-a-thon. I will leave the info for that linked in the description below. I think when this video is going up, it will almost like be over, but um, you know, it's fine. That's just how schedules work sometimes. But there are a few prompts, and I'm just taking this one pretty chill. So let's get onto the prompts and what they are. And um, I'm still a tree. Okay. So the prompts that this one book that I'm going to be reading is going to fulfill are Snow on the Cover and Holiday Themed Book. So this book is going to be One Snowy Night, a Heartbreaker Bay novella by Jill Shalvis. And this is recommended to me by Maddie from Princess Paperback because she was like, I was like, hey, are you doing this readathon? I decided to do it like today. She's like, yes, read this money book with me. And I said, okay. So um, here we are. It's really quick, so I should be able to read it pretty quick. But um, okay, so what is it about? So basically, this girl named Rory needs to get home to her family for Christmas but she doesn't have a ride and the only way to get home is with this really hot dude that she finds annoyingly handsome and his big goofy dog and um you know thing they have some history they went to high school together some stuff happened and uh, things are about to get steamy in traffic so um that sounds like a fun time for me to get me in the Christmas smutty spirit so sounds like a win-win all around honestly now next is going to be book you received as a gift so that is going to be where's my book shadow frost by coco ma which was gifted to me by madison so shout out madison sponsoring this tbr uh i said i was gonna read this last month and i didn't so now i'm going to because i really want to get to it and it is she left me a note and it says enjoy my love fall for quinlan and astrid's love and I've said this before, but she literally didn't even write her name on it because she didn't have to because she knew that I would know that she got it for me. Coco Ma is really cool. She goes to Yale and she published this book with a velvety soft cover. I met her at BookCon and she's really sweet. So I'm excited to read her book. Maddie loved it and we have the same exact taste in reading. So I feel like I will love it. And just like look at this cover and it talks about like frost. So this could kind of almost be for snow because while this is like frost, it's snow related. I like reading the tagline sometimes and this is like a little poem in the beginning. In the kingdom of Exaria, a darkness rises. Some call it a monster, laying waste to the villagers and their homes. Some say it is an invulnerable demon summoned from the deepest abysses of the immortal realm. Many soldiers from the royal guard are sent to hunt it down, not one has ever returned. So Astern Fallonheart is the princess of Exaria and she has some elemental magic. So this is a good elemental magic book, but it's elemental magic with a little bit of a twist I think so basically she was like you know what we're sending out all these royal guards to kill this beast and it's not working so I'm just gonna set out on my own so she goes out with a trusty group of those that she feels like can help her undertake this task to kill this demon that is terrorizing the kingdom but as they hunt for the demon they uncover a plot for assassination against princess astrid herself and so kind of everything that they've known their whole life has been turned on its head and while this is occurring they still have this demon that they're hunting but the demon may also be hunting them at the same time so i'm just really excited to get to this again because maddie loves it and if maddie loves it i i trust her judgment and it was kindly a gift by madison because Madison is my glucose guardian of books and I love her and I'm excited to share my thoughts on this with her. Okay, so read while eating your favorite holiday treat. Um, my favorite holiday treat, there are many, 
but I really, really do enjoy in the last few years, Boom Chicka Pop with holiday drizzle on it. So I will have to go to the store and get some, but <laughs> when I have a bag, it says there's like seven servings in a bag. No, no, no. There is one serving that lasts approximately 30 minutes because I eat that just straight. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I love it. I love my Boom Chicka Pop and I get it every holiday season. As soon as I see it in stores, I need to grab it because I'm like, I can only enjoy this during this time of year. They don't sell it otherwise. I love the white, what is it? Like white chocolate peppermint, something like that. I don't know. It's just like popcorn drizzled with chocolate and peppermint goodness. And it's amazing. And I highly, highly recommend that you eat it. Try it for yourself, please. It's so good. So the book that I want to read while eating popcorn, Boom Chicka Pop Holiday Flavors is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, I started this a month ago and I put it down because like Harry Potter is so easy to just like put, like I hate to say it, it's, it's easy to put down because I know the story so well that I know I can always just pick back up at any point and be fine but i really want to finish reading this so that i can watch the harry potter movie because that's going to put me in such a holiday spirit and i realized the issue is, is like i was trying to read this at the same time as reading other books and i can't really read more than one physical book at a time so i would rather just dedicate myself to it for a day or two and the reason it was going very slowly is because i'm annotating it look forward to some harry potter content for me in the future it's supposed to be kind of a Surprise, but I'm, I'm going to drop a little hint here that there could be some Harry Potter related videos coming your way But in order for that to happen, I need to actually finish the book So I think I'm just gonna try and knock it out this week while eating holiday treats And it will really just get me the holiday spirit because Harry Potter is just something that is formative to my childhood And I love a lot and I also feel that way about Christmas So it's gonna put me in a Christmas spirit then the next thing is a book title related to music. So for that, I really want to read The Notes, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, which is, yes, a BTS thing. This is all of their notes that come in their albums compiled and translated into English. And I really, really want to read this because if you know anything about BTS, they have this BTS universe that is the storyline of their music videos, basically. And the notes just gives like more depth into what happens. And there's also a webcomic. It's very, it's basically like, seven boys were friends in high school and then their lives went separate ways and then bad things started happening to all of them and but then one of them Jin discovers that he can time travel so he keeps going back and repeating things over and over and that's the basic gist of it and like if you watch the music videos you kind of get a sense of what's going on but you're not really sure and then you read the webcomic and you're like oh okay this is starting to be pieced together and i think this is going to be the last big piece to like fully wrap my mind around it so what I want to do is this weekend coming up, because this readathon is through to the 8th, is just spend some time re-watching all the music videos and all the related content, maybe reread the webcomic throughout the week, and then get to reading, just try and bang this out in like a day. It's only 800 something pages, so I think I could definitely do it. And then I just want to be prepared because I think that when BTS drops new music, their new music videos are going to be back to relating to this storyline which is why they just dropped this notes compilation and the webtoon within the last year so i'm preparing myself and i love bts i love when artists have this complexity layered into their music where you're always trying to look for hints and analyze things and create theories i think it's a lot of fun and i think that the story is really dark and not something that I was expecting from BTS, but when I found out about it, I just absolutely loved it because of how dark it is and just like how immersive. So I can't wait to read this and like just think about everything. <laughs> just think and think and think. And that's related to music obviously because it's BTS. <laughs> And then the bonus is 10 blind dates. I don't know if I will get to this one. I'm just gonna leave it out for now. I'm trying to be low-key, not stress myself out. It's actually kind of hard when I was putting together this TBR. Um, I wasn't quite sure if I knew like exactly what I wanted to read this month. So I kind of just put some books that I've been looking at and I feel like I'm gonna be pretty slow on the reading until I get to Christmas time where I'm gonna be on vacation for two weeks and then hopefully I can do like a lot of reading then. So I'm just, Kind of thinking about like what i want to read and just tentatively plan out some books to read but again like i'm not putting any pressure on myself to even like finish this readathon or to read x amount of books to, like hit a goal like i'm not worried about that i'm worried about just like living my life you know and 
reading because I enjoy it and I want to read these books. So with that being said, now that um, I'm done filming this little part for the Tis of the season a -thon, I'm going to take off this jacket because I'm actually sweating to death and I cannot sustain that. I love being a tree, but you know, when you have the light on you, it, you can only be a tree for so long in a hot jacket. So the next book that I'm going to be reading is going to be a buddy read with Keely over at Mermaid Keely and Madison over at Princess of Paperback and I'm excited because it's vampire smut. So um, it's going to be a fun time because you know what, just some good old paranormal smut and I'm here for it. So Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. It is book number one of the Black Dather Decker Brotherhood. So Wrath is the only pure blood vampire left in the world and he is the head of the Black Dagger Brotherhood. He has a score to settle with the killers of his parents. However, when his most trusted fighter in the Brotherhood is killed, leaving behind an orphaned half-blood daughter unaware of her heritage, Wrath must bring her into the Brotherhood and into the world of vampires. Beth Randalls is approached by a man in the middle of the night and and taken to the Brotherhood, and while she doesn't really know what's happening to her, there's a new restlessness inside of her. And uh, so yeah, that just sounds like some good old paranormal romance, and I'm ready to experience it. <laughs> and I think it'll be really fun buddy reading with my two lovely friends. The next book that I want to read is one that I have been dying to get to, and I just haven't yet, but I think December is going to be the time, and that is going to be Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. This, especially now that I'm into like K-pop and I know a little bit about Korean culture, I feel like this can help teach me a little bit more because literature is always a good way to learn some more things and it's always good to constantly be learning about different cultures and whatnot. So I'm excited and I've had this book I got from Book of the Month like forever ago. Please check out my code if you're interested in Book of the Month YA. I am still an affiliate for them and yeah, I was just, this was the first book I got from them so I was really excited for it. And so, Wicked Fox is about Gu Myung, who is a Gumiho, which are nighttail foxes which survive on consuming the souls of men. However, she tries to live her life pretty morally by only consuming the souls of bad men. However, one day in modern day Seoul, Myung crosses paths with a young boy when he's being attacked by a goblin in the woods, and so she saves him, but in the process she loses her fox bead, which is her Gumiho soul, and without it she will die. And now she is faced with the choice to choose between her immortal life or Jihoon, the boy that she saves, mortal life. So this is like an urban fantasy with some folklore mixed in and I just have heard that Jihoon is just such a soft sweet boy which like I'm a sucker for soft boys in literature and we need more of them so I'm really excited to have this very like soft romance interest and this is potentially going to be a buddy read with a group of friends and I don't know if we have any solid plans yet but I am hoping that we solidify it and we can all read it together and I just think it's gonna be a really really fun experience and again I've just I've been wanting to read this book for forever so like why haven't I yet I don't know I just think it's gonna be an amazing time so now we have Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Neon and this is the follow-up to Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Neon which I read about a year ago and I'm really excited for this follow-up. This book has trigger warnings for sexual assault so just know that before you go into this um, and this is actually one of the only books that I've seen that does have a trigger warning page which is great because I am all for books being more open about their trigger warning so just on the prologue page it says please be aware that this book contains scenes of violence and sexual assault and there's also a trigger warning in the second book so I just think that books that deal with difficult topics should definitely just you know make the reader aware of them beforehand and I do think that there should be more pressure on publishers to include this in the book so I really just think that this is a great example of a publisher seeing that they're needed and putting them there which I really appreciate. So in this land of Nikara there are different castes. Basically the demons are the ruling class, there is the demon king, and then there are the paper class which are humans, and in between is the steel class which are half-breeds. So the demon king every year selects a harem of eight of the most beautiful women in the kingdom to be his paper girls. And Lee is chosen because of her beautiful golden eyes which are pictured on the cover and she must go to become a concubine for this demon king which is obviously a very horrible life to live and this book 
deals a lot with how each of the girls deals differently with their situation and in the midst of all of this Lee falls in love which is a very very forbidden romance and so yeah I just thought that this book was so good I loved loved the romance and I really think that this book is going to explore some difficult yet important topics and so I'm really hoping to read it soon okay and then last up on this TBR this TBR is maybe like a few books less than I would normally put on a TBR but I'm trying to keep it like nice and simple and then pick up more if I have the time for it rather than putting a lot of books in my TBR and then not getting to them which is also a fine thing to do and I do a lot of the times but I just feel like this month like I don't know what I want to read ahead of time so I kind of just want to give myself room to just pick books based on what I'm feeling at the moment. So the last book that I want to pick up in 2019 is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I meant to read this book in like June. It's gonna be a buddy read with Madison and Steph and um yeah we never did it <laughs> but I've heard great things about it and I know that it's just like a very well-renowned adult fantasy series and I just feel like I need to get to it, you know? The Final Empire is book one in Mistborn and this is basically set in a world where the Dark Lord won and the street urchins are trying to stage a rebellion against his like thousand year rule and in this world it's like a system of magic based on metals and like digesting metals or consuming metals give you certain powers, something like that and if you can use all the different metals and you are Mistborn and the you know the description for this is kind of vague and i think it's that way on purpose so kind of with this information in hand that i've heard over and over from this book i'm ready to go into the book steph did read this without us and she said that it was really good so i'm excited to get to it and i think that i'm finally like in the mood to really try and sink my teeth into a long fantasy series and finally get around to reading some brandon sanderson I may potentially also read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, um, but I'm not gonna like officially put that on my TBR, but like it's in the back of my mind, you know? All right, with that being said, I hope you have a lovely December. Um, I'm gonna go back into tree mode for the end of this video. So yes, please have a lovely December. Please let me know if you are excited for the holiday season down below and what you are planning on reading this December if you are planning on participating in Tis the Season-a-thon and until then have some fun read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.